Alrighty, my friends. Um, <laughs> you might be wondering, well, late Saturday night, early Sunday morning, I suppose, what would be somebody be doing talking about friendships? And I don't know, it's just one of those topics I've been wanting to talk about. And um, I got my true furry friend here, one of four, and this is baby Sadie. Say hi. And uh, you want to talk about unconditional friendships. Um, this is one right here. This This dog right here, even though she'll chew the heck out of your place, she'll lick your face, curl up next to you, just give you so much love. And isn't that what we want with our friendships? We want to feel good. We want to feel supported in our friendships. And hopefully we're doing the same for other people. And the thing is, you know, I was going to title this True Friends versus False Friends or other, you know, there are different ways you could look at this and, and approach this topic of friendships. And I realized that uh, you don't need a label for them. People are people. So friends, you have a variety of friends that you can have in a variety of situations. Uh, I've actually, there's um, Les Brown, that motivational speaker is awesome. If you haven't checked out his work, check out his work. He talks about how he has his health friends. He has his business friends. He has all these different friends for different situations. You could have that. You know, you could have a friend that you know you would hang out in this situation, maybe, but not in another. And you might have another friend that you would um, in another situation. And I've even heard of cases where people will not mix friends. Uh, and I, I'm a big fan of introducing as many people to each other as they can. Uh, you know, so people can form networks and make connections. But I've run into people that aren't crazy about that. Um, then you might have situations. You might be asking yourself, well, how do you know if you have a true friend or not? There's not, I don't think there's an easy answer for that. The one thing I will tell you from a psychological standpoint, and again, this is not replacing any professional advice, therapy, anything that, you know, you think you need. But um, what I will tell you is, um, I mean, and just, just from what I know as far as networking, we talk about this in career development, communication, sociology, and psychology, and other courses. Uh, one of the things I think that's really important is are you feeling good with, with this person? If this person, you have a primary group, right? And a secondary group. Your primary group is going to be your close friends and family. What I often say is who's sitting at your dinner table. That's who's sitting at your dinner table. The people that you trust, you let your guard down more with. Um, and if we look at a secondary group, those are people that we have mutually interdependent relationships with. Um, the person at the bank, uh, the person at the grocery store, they're probably not going to go home and, you know, eat dinner with you, but you, you might, I mean, depending on how close you are with them or if you knew them before they worked there, maybe, but, uh, but most of the time, obviously not, right? They're, these are people that have well-defined roles, but they're helping you out. So once you know that, okay, I have a variety of situations and encounters with people throughout the day, right, whatever that happens to be, your friends are going to draw from that. You have, and, and this is really interesting, because you have a variety of friends that match different phases of your life and different roles that you've been in and different situations. For instance, you have uh, a childhood friend that you still keep in touch with and that friend knows everything about you. But if you haven't kept in touch with that friend throughout, you might be bonding more with your older memories. And then um, there are other cases where that friend will have kept up with you. That friend will have kept up with you and will have, um, and you'll have kept up with that friend. You guys will be up to date with each other and your information and your experiences are going to reflect more of where you are, both. But then there are other people where you've had a time where you hung out with them and maybe in college, and then you reconnect later based on that earlier bond, but you, you've had different lives or some people have gone on to get married and have kids. And uh, I've even seen this, you know, it's it, with high school too, where you'll talk to people, you know, you've had friends from high school, they get married or they have serious relationships and that takes them a little more away from their single friends. So if you're, you know, it's, it's you can't, this is why you can't judge people for where they are at, at different points in their lives. It's like, if people are not, you can't expect somebody to stay consistent all the time in every situation. You know what I mean? It's like if you have a friend in one situation, um, at one point in time, they're going to be the best friend perhaps to you and you're the same and then things change. People change. People grow. And notice for your soul's growth, that's important that certain people drop away so other people can come in. And from a soul's level, there's no judgment about it.
But at a personality level, we have this hanging on behavior, right? That you must stay my friend or you know, maybe you're possessed, but I'm not saying you are for sure. But there are people that are saying you've got to be like this all the time and um, you're my friend or only if you're that way. Or they people, you wouldn't want anyone imposing that on you, right? You wouldn't want anyone thinking the same about you. So what's very freeing and liberating is you can ask yourself, in this situation, with this, am I close to this friend? Do we want to hang out? Um, how do I feel when I'm hanging out with this person? How does that person feel? Uh, at a soul level, what do I feel? Um, and then the other thing is, you might be saying, well, and I know that some of pe you know, people watching are thinking about this, what about when you have tragedy? Uh, tragedy or loss, right? You have tragedy or loss. Sorry, my dog hit the computer there. Um, you have situations where friends, some friends are nowhere to be found. And then you have other situations where there's there certain friends that are right there, um, you know, with you. And I was just talking um, to several people about this at the coffee shop the other day. It isn't that these people are not... It, it, just in general, we were talking about this. It's not that, and Eric Clapton, he talks about this in his autobiography. I love it. There's a section. Um, he says, you know, you find out who your friends are. He says that when he, he, lost the, he, he lost his son, he said that a lot of his friends from, you know, his celebrity friends disappeared or weren't there. What you have to understand is I can't speak for anybody else's experience, but I will tell you that some people are uncomfortable. They don't know what to say. Some people haven't dealt with their own loss, and they could they would do well if they studied the models of Engel and Kubler Ross, um, is around loss, death, and dying, and and just grieving in general. You can understand what people are going through, but some people want to stay away from it, and they don't want to be reminded of it, and they might be wrapped up in their own lives, and then they come back at a later point when everything's kind of fine, and they might not even ask about it, or they will ask about it. Um, but that doesn't replace any professional help that you need or support that you need. See, that's the thing. And that's where we also have to see that certain people are going to be supportive other, and maybe they can be, but then other people are not going to be. And then you would also ask yourself, well, when you learn certain things about certain friends, then, you know, not to judge them, but then you ask yourself, wow, so this is in a variety of situations I know that I can go at least in this moment with this person in this way. And that doesn't mean that we want to, and this is different, you know, people say, well, you know, in, in a lot of motivational psychology fields, they, they uh, I mean, in, in personal development especially, be positive, you know, um, don't be, you know, I mean, I don't think they ever say don't be genuine, but everybody's always talking about, hey, let's be chipper all the time, 100%. You know, and I have a friend that's really good about expressing his emotions across the board, and he's very honest about where he is at any moment. My younger brother's like that too. He's very, able, he's very skilled at being able to express how he is in any moment with people. Um, I, I, I just, the thing is, the bottom line is, if with, the, with that particular situation, when you have death and dying loss, and you express your needs to other people and you let them know, um, you know, or maybe if they're supportive or, you know, lend a little extra time, and to being there for you, it deepens your relationship. I'll tell you what, it totally does. Because you find out in those situations, wow, this person's there for me. But that doesn't replace any kind of professional help that you need. Although there was a research article that said two things. Social relationships are the number one predictor for happiness. But a second one says that friendships, certain friendships can work like a therapeutic agent. The problem is they're not trained in the psychological skill sets many times. But they're, people are very willing to confide in friends. Now, there's something else I quickly want to say, that we have private friends. Well, we have, sorry, I should say we have a private self. And um, so your private friends, the close friends that will know, you, you know, you keep things in private with. Uh, those are going to, they're going to know about those things. Uh, you have a public friend, uh, maybe people that know more about your public self. And then you actually have a secret self, which Carl Jung talks about. You have a shadow self, a, a part that you're confronting, that you kind of are holding back. See what, if you work through any issues across those, the secret part of yourself, the private part, and your public part, then what happens is then you, you create a balance. The more harmony you can get across three, the easier people know who you are in the situations. You see what I mean? It's like you know what you're getting. You know who you're interacting with. So what's interesting is, 
I, I, I can I want to share this uh, for two years I assisted a motivational company just five events and they were awesome uh, seminars on DVD up in Detroit and the president is amazing the products are amazing all of that and so he was very gracious you know when I'd volunteer at the events uh, help with product sales sometimes um, ushering other things so I got to meet different motivational speakers and what was interesting was um, they were all awesome but it was interesting to notice the presentation styles that some people were different they're very friendly and everything on stage and then off stage they, I'm not saying they weren't friendly but their total persona was different they were giving you another self and then there were another there were a couple of other people like Jack Canfield when I assisted in one of his events the guy was incredible I mean it was amazing the guy was just like who he was all right uh, Warren Gracious I would say too Brian Tracy all these other people but the, the what it is especially Jack Canfield and it stuck out the guy was the exact same person that same person that you're talking to in one-on-one -on -one as you were when when you saw him on stage and that's what I said to myself I said that's the kind of well even the president of the company and um, you know his assistants and th there was another there are a bunch of other top leaders they had there like that ran the company that guy's amazing the class act you know these people I said wow they're very friendly and forthright with people they and you start see these are the people when you can get around these people and you're you become that way or you have something to offer as well then it, it kind of rubs um, it kind of goes back and forth it kind of like you start expanding and they start expanding in in your presence it's kind of a give and take uh, what was interesting about what um, Jack Canfield said is he said uh, you know and we talked about the law of attraction he was speaking on that too um, and he said how do you you know you attracted this you attracted our meeting and I just kind of was I, I kind of smiled when he said that because he's so down to earth the guy was so down to earth he just and he was such a friendly guy and I, I'm sharing that with you to just basically say you know it, it's amazing to see how you know with certain people that wow this this is somebody I could see myself hanging out with or listening to or um, shooting the breeze with or and maybe in other situations maybe not you know it's just what's amazing is when you go through a variety of experiences and you start noticing things in life and you go through different phases you, you just know that wow this is I want to know more about this person or I want to you know what I mean grow or be around this person um, and and that's exciting because that kind of tells you what what you know uh, John D Martini right that motivational speaker talks about how whatever you notice in another person and I've heard it uh, other people have said this too it's reflecting in yourself that you can bring it out um, and it's pretty powerful because then that will help you to match your set of friends at any particular time now what's interesting is you're you, so moving on here you're gonna have certain friends at certain points and not at other points and that's part of the nature of things so then if, mm. if you're wondering well you need to be my friend or you have a friend that maybe stepped out for a while and then is coming back people come in at different points they'll come back um, you know and then they'll leave come back and they'll do all these things and then you might have um, friends that stay more for the long haul uh, you'll even have and I've, if I can get deep here with you for a second friends that come in um, they're in your past life in one role and then they come back in another role in another life so they're they're not necessarily your friend they might be your enemy quote unquote enemy and you start questioning what even an enemy is because it's all by soul agreement many times so then you don't really look at enemies or your friends that don't like you at a personality level or that so-called friends that don't like you anymore or you you felt that at one time they did uh, you don't look at it in quite the same way because at a soul level it's all planned for the higher good of everyone involved so there are also soulmate friends um, or the so I shouldn't say soulmate friends I should say soul friends uh, friends that um, you're you're going through time with and that you're constantly friends with that they're they're almost like you see them over and over and over in a similar fashion uh, I had a past life uh, reading well I did I was under hypnosis last year and um, in this case the uh, friend that I saw he had di a different color hair he was also a religious scholar back then which is amazing 
He's also into religion in this life. And it was a soul recognition, even though he looked physically different, I saw him, I saw what he looked like. It was incredible. I saw him standing in front of a church. And apparently, I, he was a buddy of mine at that church, which is a Protestant church. Um, it was in New England, and I even, I could describe the church, and this is where you need one of those, what are they called, the, the spirit artists or graphic artists, whatever they are. They're these people that can see what you're seeing, and they can draw it out. And I wish he, the person would have done that, because that church, I'd love to have seen it, it was on top of a hill, and he smiled, he was holding a Bible, he was waiting for me to come, and then we're going to go into the church and hang out. And it was amazing. So that was one of my past life um, you know, situations, and then I told a friend about it, um, I, and it sounds so strange if you tell, hey, uh, how are you doing? I saw you with different color hair, and you were not this other religion, you, you're Catholic in this life, but you were Protestant in another life. I mean, he was like, uh, he just listened, and he was interested, you know, but it was kind of like, wow, so we were friends across different time periods. Um, I mean, so you can you can go as far as you want with this friendship business. But um, the other thing with friends is it's something else. You know, there's some people that are really good at having a lot of friends and maintaining a lot of relationships. They make it a priority. And then there are a lot of people that don't. There are a lot of people that just have a few. And there's no right or wrong answer. You know, do you have to have a few friends? Do you have to have a lot? Um, do you have mainly acquaintances? You know, and do. But the thing is, there will be a lot of people that don't have deep relationships, but they'll have um, a lot of acquaintances and then try to find some meaning, deeper meaning in those acquaintances and that they're not getting in their deeper friendships. Um, there's actually, uh, there was a study that came out that said men have a harder time with this than women. Women have higher levels of oxytocin and lower levels of testosterone, well, most women. And so they bond more than men do. So they have that maternal instinct, which is not proven by science, but it's the feeling like there's a bonding, right? That And... And um, they're able to bond more with other people than men can too, but they have the testosterone, which breaks down the oxytocin levels, which gives more of the feeling of deep personalization. Um, so they, the research study found that men have a harder time uh, bonding more with people. They have a more a broader sense, broader number of acquaintances than women, and women have more closer, closer intimate relationships across the board than men. Uh, I mean, you could take what you want with that, but it's um, it's really fascinating. And so, so the thing too that you know, with friends, we can learn things about ourselves in a safe environment. You know, what is it that you know? You, it's it's a cool thing to open up to a friend and and learn from your friend and grow. And the, the thing is, you want them to be supportive, just as you're being. You want to be careful. You've heard it said that don't share all your goals with all you know every just anybody. Um, you want to be around friends that say you can do it. Now, the question of blind spots, do you, do you, does your friend need to reveal blind, blind spots? A good friend may, sure. Um, but you don't want somebody constantly putting your ideas down, making you feel wor worse, or saying that can never be done, or that can never happen. Um, you know, you, you don't need any energy vampires or drainers. Um, you know, you might want to ask yourself, and, and you'll know too, if your intuition is telling you when you're hanging out with somebody and then you realize something at a deeper level, don't hang out with this person, I mean, you might want to listen. There's something about that at an innate soul level. There's a lesson maybe behind it um, of why you don't want to hang out with that person or maybe hang out with this person and you feel good and you feel joyful The soul at the soul level. You might want to pay attention to that. So uh, the other thing is, I think it's one of the final points I'm going to make here, is related to the uh, idea of experiences. The more experiences that you have with friends, a wide variety of friends, the more you have to draw from, um, the more bonding that can take place, the more you can draw and refer to certain situations. Uh, you're going to have challenges in friendships. You're going to have ups and downs. Um, that's important. And the thing that you'll find, and there's a really good book about this, there's one called The Art of Friendship, highly recommend, by Hor Chow and Hor Chow. There's another book called, uh, what is that one called? It's coming to me. Um, well, it's funny because the title of the book is called How to Get a Date Worth Keeping by Dr. Henry Cloud. But there's some lessons that he talks about that apply to friendships. And what he says is in, in college, you make a broad set of friends 
and then it gets smaller as you go into the work world. It's so true. And I actually, I remember when I was a freshman in, um, I, I was a freshman in college, I remember I was sitting next to this uh, really nice looking girl, you know, and she was older. She was a, uh, a senior at the time. Or she, junior or senior, it was my evolutionary biology class, and she was so wise. And uh, so I would sit next to her, and she would tell me some, I mean, definitely caught my eye. And it was great, we'd, we'd chat. And she said, um, she, she said, you know, what you'll find, and I was a freshman, I was like taking notes, you know, and the professor and her, um, basically I was saying, she was telling me, she says, you'll find that as you get, uh, as you move through college, your friends are going to get smaller and smaller because you're going to be in different situations and a lot of them will drop away. And it's kind of like Facebook too, and we'll get there in a moment, but, um, you know, I had two to three hundred friends that I made uh, my first year of college, you know, and at the university there. And it was amazing. I had, I remember having a printout from the top to the bottom. That list did get smaller uh, and smaller. And then, um, you know, it was great because we had social functions. You know, we met a lot of people, like just different friends that I had, different floor mates, roommates. We had a variety of things. Some people I still keep in touch with today from college. But uh, it was amazing because she was saying that. This is what happens, I've noticed. And that's what Dr. Henry Cloud says. He says you have the social structure of a university setting. Uh, we could also say the workplace setting. Uh, we could also say any other situation. But what happens is when you have that structure, you make friends. But this is what you'll notice, that the friends are situational many times. And the, the ones that are not, you know, the ones that you keep from, you might have had a job or you might have gone attended a school and, you kept in touch with some people, right? Your fellow classmates or whatever. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, those friends, certain ones will drop away and other ones will come in. And that's in the way of things. Okay, that's just the, in the way that it's supposed to happen. And what's interesting is once you don't uh, fight that, you just accept that people are going to come in and out and you'll do the best that you can to be a good friend and they're a great friend and you'll learn from them just as they're learning from you then you don't really worry as far as um, who's your friend at a particular moment or who's not. Um, the one thing is you want to make sure that the friends, you might want to just make sure they're lifting you up to a higher level, that they, they're happy for your success, that they want you to be successful, you want them to be successful, uh, you want them to go along further in whatever path or whatever they're interested in. Uh, it's so, so important and so that's kind of what I've done, like my friends now um, and I feel that all of the friends that I've had have been gifts at different people, you know, different times in my life. And um, it, it, the thing I've learned is don't take people for granted. That is a huge one. Do not take people for granted. You know what I mean? Really appreciate the friends that are especially there for you. Um, and, you know, you'll have some friends that might not be as close. Um, you know, the ones that if you have your wallet on the table, right? And they're <laughs> just saying, you know, it's a test, right? Do you have to worry about the wallet on your table? You never know. I'm just saying. Um, you, you obviously don't want any friends like that anyway, but you want the very trustworthy people that, in your life. And what happens is they, if, if they're open, if you're open to them, they're open to you. And there's this two-way street that happens. Uh, it, it's pretty amazing because they, they respect you as you respect them. And uh, there's a mutual respect and understanding and you, you you're happy you grow you move forward and those you can say that's a friend you hang out with that person you're not drained you're feeling like that's a friend I hung out I feel empowered I feel nourished I did the same and that doesn't mean that if you have a, a challenge that you can't open up with that person or to that person and um, get a perspective but it also means that you're handling your emotional business the best you can you're, you're empathetic but you're not dumping you know, or you're not asking for sympathy. Um, and I want to be sure that I'm careful here with that because a lot of people do need support. Sometimes they don't know where to go. But I'm just saying with your friends, there's a difference. Your friend isn't always a therapist. You know, so it's important to be understanding that your friend is supportive, but they, they can offer listening help or other things, and they, 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 you've got to respect their limits. And then don't be surprised if you have those ones that disappear and then show up again after whatever number of months or who don't see the severity of a situation that you're going through they don't see it in your lens they're busy with other things or they're not as close with you as you thought they were 
and, and it's just okay. Let those people just respect where people are, you know. And um, let's get to Facebook now. The Facebook friends, you know. And I might have a separate video blog on this because that could be a whole other uh, lesson there. But uh, you have a lot of friends. Uh, I mean, you forget even who at you added, right, or who added you. And uh, you know, I've deleted let's see, 170 the other year, and 70 just about a month ago. And uh, you might say, well, that's cold and callous. Well, and the funny thing is, I've done the same thing in my cell phone. Let me just go ahead and share this with you. Is, is this making sense? So this right here, I have, I went through my phone. I encourage my students to do it very carefully. I'm not, I'm not trying to, you know, tell anyone what to do or or not to do. But what's interesting is you you have a lot of numbers in your phone and uh, so-called friends, you know, or people that you might meet one time and never, you guys never connect again. Uh, you know, that's why you want to make sure that if you meet someone, you kind of make the effort. But then if the person's not responsive after a couple times or whatever, you got to respect people. You know, don't expect that they're going to be your best friend overnight, the BFF, right? Best friend forever, instantly. Um, they, you know, in social situations, repeated social situations, the familiarity breeds the liking. So you'll usually become friends with people that you see over and over again that there's a familiarity and then it naturally progresses the friendship so you know I've noticed that wow and this is leading to the final point so so once you clean out you know whoever's fake or you don't really need in your cell phone to take up space uh, or Facebook right you, it's not a big deal either way then what happens is you're creating a vacuum for new people to come in and now your energy can focus more on the friends that are really wow that's a friend you know um, that at least that this is where I am and you wish the other people well and um, you might even want to let them know if you I mean you might want to be careful about it but just clean what however you feel you need to your phone and your your Twitter account if you have that or uh, Facebook and and really focus on the ones that um, are there for you or mean something to you I I actually have talked to people that on Facebook they only have their friends close friends they're family members and they have, I mean, there's been people that only have 20 or 30 people on Facebook and they're happy with that. I mean, can you believe it? 20 or 30 people. Uh, and meanwhile, I know people that have like 5,000 or 4,000 or 3,000 people that are on there. And you wonder if they do keep two tabs on everybody in their Facebook uh, account. But another thing is, you know, that idea of taking interest in your friends. You know, taking interest in your friends, asking about what's going on in their lives. You know, not being so preoccupied only with what's going on in your own life. They say, you know, concentrate on other people. Now, however, that being said, um, not to say that it has to be two-way, but it's just as you're asking for other people, asking about other people and learning about them. Not that you're doing it for this reason, but you want that reciprocation. If uh, somebody's not checking in with you or asking about what's going on in your life and you're mentioning a few things or they don't care and they're only busy talking about themselves, you got to ask yourself, you know, or maybe you want to share with that friend, you know, I, I would like this, and just communicate with them. There's no right or wrong answer. There's no hard, fast rules, hard and fast rules, but it's just something to think about. Um, and I know this is kind of lengthy already, so I've got to make sure that I'm not boring anyone. Um, but we'll wrap up here in the next minute or two. But what's, uh, I think another thing that I found with friends is another uh, way that you'll meet friends um, is through situational uh, in endeavors that you've gone through. Like, you might have gone on vacation and you were in a, a mm, an exotic location or you're hanging out in an international city and you made some real good friends. In that moment, you made friends. Like, these are people in that situation. You were there for a week or two or whatever, and now you made friends. You learned about each other in that situation. But after that situation your friendship may drop away or it'll be limited to the ch the meetings that you have. So it's really interesting to have those meetings where you meet with people once in a while, um, but you've known them and you, you met them in under extraordinary situations or when you're traveling or whatever. And that being said, I want to share maybe um, a final point uh, from The Art of Friendship, in that book I was mentioning earlier, that idea of keeping your friendships alive, finding ways to write, text, email, send letters, uh, I have a f uh, one friend I want to share in particular, he'll send uh, cards, thoughtful cards, handwritten cards, and he does this with his friends. He's very good at nurturing his relationships in his church. His family's awesome. He, he does a good job with that. Um, and he's very good, you know, with the acquaintances. He mentors people. 
Uh, so he does a very good job uh, across a wide variety of um, roles. So he doesn't have a shortage of friends because he's always out in the community and giving back and caring. Uh, but what's interesting is he makes time for his friends, he, no matter if they're married, single, whatever. He'll make time for them and they'll get together. Um, and, you know, he'll get together we'll hang out a few times a year. What, what's inter And we keep in touch throughout. But what's interesting is also um, there's another person I knew from the last uh, place that I taught at a college here in town. Um, she was amazing. She told me that she would get together once a year and her friends, she had seven at the time, and then they started dropping out as they got married and they were not able to do this. Then she said the, the other time that they did it, it went down to five. What's interesting is uh, seven people decided to meet in Arizona. So once a year, her close college friends and other friends that she had known, I guess, growing up, but mainly her college friends, I believe, um, they all got together and converged on this um, city. You know, so whatever city maybe where one of them lived. Uh, and they basically would get together and they made it a habit that no matter what was going on in their lives, they got together and they converged as a group. And it's such a cool lesson that, and I, I mean, I love that idea that these friends have made an agreement that, you know what, no matter what's going on in our lives, we're going to get together. This is the group. But again, don't don't worry. And remember, she, she had two friends that kind of dropped away and no longer did that as they got married. And they knew they could only keep it up for so long. Uh, but, you know, it's it's pretty exciting, isn't it? That that you who you know at one time, you know, in one situation can grow, that the friendship can grow uh, in a group setting over time through a variety of situations. Uh, so, so I said, um, you know, quite a bit in this video, and I'm going to be quiet because some of you might already have uh, pulled up, you know, a pillow and a sleeping bag and just <laughs> put that near your computer. Like, you know what, this guy is putting me to sleep. But, um, you know, I just wanted to share this. I just said, you know, I'm going to create a video blog on friendships. It's something that I wanted to talk about. And, um, and so I just said, you know, I'm going to do it. And not for any particular reason. It's just something I wanted to do, you know, and share. And also to show appreciation. Just, wow, it's amazing when, you know, you appreciate that you have uh, quality friends and uh, you're grateful for that. And uh, it's it's a way, too, to honor that fact. And, um, okay, just wanted to share that and uh, I'll talk to you later.